Hello and welcome back to Swapnil's analysis and I am Swapnil. Today we are going to discuss yet another interesting poem of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Now Paul Lawrence Dunbar he is considered as one of the first African American writer of 19th century. So Paul Lawrence Dunbar his parents they were the slaves and after the abolishment of slavery they had become freed and as we all know how the slavery was abolished from the America how the civil war took place how first which novel was responsible and who was responsible for drawing the attention not only of American society but of the whole world towards the most heinous act of slavery that was prevalent in 19th century America. So Harriet Beecher Stowe, the title of the poem written by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, Harriet Beecher Stowe is itself the title of the poem. So who was Harriet Beecher Stowe? Harriet Beecher Stowe was a American novelist, a lady who had written a very famous, one of the very best novel of English literature and that was The Uncle Tom's Cabin. Now it was published in 1851-52, Uncle Tom's Cabin, the novel was about the slavery. Uncle Tom's Cabin, the novel was about the slavery and the novel talks about Tom who was a slave and how hard life he has to go through because of the slavery. Novel nowhere supports the slavery, nowhere criticizes the slavery. So therefore when this novel it got published it became immediately a very popular novel. And there was a time once that this novel was the most sold novel, of course, after the Bible. So what happened? The contemporary American politician, mostly Abraham Lincoln, he thought that because of this novel, the whole world now has realized about American slavery and American slavery should be abolished from the American I mean, slavery should be abolished. From America and it was because of Harriet Beecher Stowe and it was because of her novel that America was able to abolish the slavery from its, her land and therefore Paul Lawrence Dunbar a late 19th century African American poet whose parents they were the slaves he wrote poem in praise of Harriet Beecher Stowe. He is actually showing the gratefulness of African American people or African American slaves towards the Harriet Beecher Stowe. So the whole poem, nowhere in the poem, the name of Harriet Beecher Stowe is mentioned, but still the poem talks about Harriet Beecher Stowe and what she has knowingly or unknowingly done for the former slaves of America. So the poem is very short about 12 to 15 lines poem and written in a very simple and lucid language. So let us start our discussion. She told the story and the whole world wept at wrongs and cruelties it had not known but for this fearless woman's voice alone, she spoke to conscience that long had slept. Her message, freedom's clear reveal, swept from the heedless hovel to complacent throne. So the poem is kind of written in a couplet where two lines carries the whole meaning. So we will discuss the poem in a two lines or we'll consider the only the couplets of the poem. She told the story and the whole world swept at wrongs and cruelties it had not known. So slavery was prevalent 
in America. Everyone was aware of the slavery who were living in America. But the whole world, they knew, but no one was able to talk about the slavery. No one was able to talk about the wrong and cruelties of slavery. And many of the people, they were completely unaware. And many of the people, they came to know about the slavery only because of that novel, The Uncle Tom's Cabin. Therefore, he says that she told the story. She means Harriet Beecher Stowe. She told the story through the novel Uncle Tom's Cabin. And the whole world wept and the whole world realized the wrongs and cruelties that the African-American slaves has to go through. Whole world came to know about the lives of a slave people because of that novel. And then for this fearless woman's voice alone, she spoke to conscience that long had slept. And he considers Harriet Beecher Stowe as a fearless Why? Because no other writer, be it of a British writer or American writer, male writer dared to write about the slavery, to write, to raise the questions over the slavery. No one ever challenged the slavery therefore he is calling that this fearless woman's voice alone that she was fearless she did not care about anything being a woman and being a writer it was very difficult in the 1850s for the women to write to express and to talk about such a very critical issue that was of slavery therefore he is here calling her fearless she spoke to conscience that long had slept. That long conscience means people, many of the people, they were seeing the wrongdoings of the slaves, the cruelties that uh, slaves they have to grow through. But no one dared to talk about it. And therefore it says, she spoke to her conscience, which has long been sleeping for the other people. Her message, freedom's clear reveal, swept from headless hovel to complacent throne. Her message was very clear and her message reached from the lower person to the higher person means towards the king as well. Towards the king as well means the king, he was also turning a blind eye towards the slavery. But her message means her novel brought the attention of everyone towards the slavery. Command and prophecy were in the tone, and from its sheath the sword of justice left. Her means the book itself is very commanding, dominating, and as we all have heard that pain is mightier than the sword, which completely proves in this case where a book forces the people to change their perception towards the slavery. As if she attacked the slavery, as if she broke that broad chains of slaves with just the tip of the pen. With just the tip of the pen, Harriet Beecher Stowe broke the broad chains, broke shackles of the slaves that here is talking about. Around two people swelled a fiery wave. Here he is talking about American Civil War. But both came from transfigured from the flame. As a metal gets shapes when we burn it a very high temperature, when it becomes very red, then we would be able to shape any kind of metal. In the same way when he is talking about around two people swelled in a fiery wave. Here he is talking about the American Civil War. When Lincoln decided to abolish slavery from America, then the southern states of America, Virginia, means Virginia and other, uh, Virginia and other states, the southern states of America, they secessioned and they declared themselves free 
from the northern states because the farmers of these states they considered that their life was totally dependent uh, dependable on the slaves because they were very large land owning farmers and people mostly in the northern part of america they were means industrialization had taken place in the northern part of the america so therefore these farmers these uh, southern states of america they declared independence from the america and they said that we are going to continue the slavery and therefore a very fear and long civil war took place from 1861 to 1865 means mostly four and a half years this civil war lasted and when this civil war ended after the death of abraham lincoln then what happened then a new america emerged a slave free america emerged after the civil war that's what he's talking about that both came as transfigured from the flame and then the last four lines is about the gratefulness of all the slave community or all the african community towards harriet beecher stove blessed be the hand that dare dared be strong to save and blessed be she who in our weakness came here she is that we must be very grateful god must bless those hand who dare to write about us who dare to write about slavery and because of her novel because of her, her courage because of her fearlessness today we are free only because of Harriet Beecher Stowe. Therefore, God must bless those hands. God must compliment her courage because she was the one who came for our support when we were very weak, when we were not able to raise our voice because uh, one of the things which many people, they are not aware of that these African uh, people, they were brought from directly America and these people, they had no knowledge of English language. They could not understand the language spoken by their masters. Therefore, they were so weak and they were illiterate. So, therefore, they became slaves of, or they remained slave for many years. And therefore, they were so weak and they were so crushed under that they had no courage to stand for themselves therefore he says that blessed be she who came to our support when we were very weak prophet and priestess at one stroke she gave a race to freedom and herself to free she was no lesser than the prophet because what is the job of a prophet to deliver the people from their pain and here he thinks means paul lawrence dunbar thinks that harriet beecher stowe was no lesser than the prophet why because she spoke on our behalf and because of her novel because of her courage because of her fearlessness a race has become totally free and she has become popular and immortal why immortal because whenever there will be a discussion about slavery anyone must acknowledge the or will have to acknowledge the work and the novel of harriet beecher stowe so this poem is all about the gratefulness of african american people or the slave former slave people towards the harriet beecher stowe for her courage in delivering her from their pain in delivering the slaves from their pains so what do you think about my presentation if you have liked my presentation don't forget to subscribe to my channel thanks for watching